Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimzeski with Adam Atkinson. We are in episode two of our series on the disciplines of a competitive life. And I want to talk about what we ended with last time, Adam, which is, you know, creating that, that plan. When you write a book, there, there's kind of an interesting little um, polarity in writing where some, some writers will ask, are you an outliner or are you not an outliner? And there are some kind of free spirits who think that the way to be creative and, and write a book is to just sit there look at the blank page and wait to be inspired. And other people say, no, 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 no. Creativity comes from a process of work and you have to outline exactly what you want to say, even if it's poetry or fiction, you outline that. And then that gives you the guidelines, the rails to really fill it in. And I remember doing this with my bodybuilding career when I was 15 years old. I said, by the time I'm 21, I'm going to um, you know, compete. By the time I'm 30, I'm going to be a pro. And, and I just, I had my whole career outlined on paper. And it really gave me some, some, some goals, but it also just allowed me to, to even try and achieve those faster, which I did, and, and then accomplish even more. Because once you're targeting something, you know, as they say, if you, if you shoot for nothing, you'll hit it every time. And it really gave me something to look forward to and to push toward. And I just don't know if, if many people these days really do uh, have that discipline where instead they just kind of get pulled from one shiny object to another. Oh, let's do this show. Let's do that show. Now that this season's over, let's compete again in you know, three months right away. So uh, I, how, how many times do you end up probably just speaking to clients about let's, let's actually plan a few years at a time. Let's, let's look at five or 10 years down the road and see what we can achieve. Yeah. I don't plan out that far too often until I maybe get somebody in a second season and they're, you know, we've seen a good transition. Um, is their fire still lit, you know, for the most part? And uh, are they still showing signs that they want to keep competing? Um, I, I find more often than not people's lifespan in this sport is shorter and, uh, you know, especially with women, once they want to have kids, it kind of takes them a while to um, return. So it, it really does depend on the person. But there's been a few times where we've mapped that out. Once someone gets a pro card, they're typically going to be in it for a long time uh, if they're still really competitive. And those people, we usually say, hey, here's the time we should take one to two years off and then really come in with a bang for your pro debut or maybe your first first or second pro season and then uh, kind of see how close they get with Olympia points and then move on from there. Yeah, and, and I appreciate you pulling me back from my, my five and 10 year plan there. I got a little too excited on that, but, but you're exactly right. Uh, not only do we not know where people are going to be in their lives, but uh, at the same time, I, I think that is how you create that that long career mindset, which which is the discipline. Because I, I think if you if you put all of your eggs in the basket of I have to win this year or I have to win my pro card by next year, you, you know we can we can build up a lot of resentment and frustration instead of thinking okay, you know for where I am, this is how many years I've been training, how many years I've been competing, this is what the typical competitive life looks like. So where am I going to flow in that regard? And that's you know, even if you beat that goal ahead of time, fantastic. But I, I, I think if you're too myopic, you can really create some pain that washes people out of the sport unnecessarily. Yeah, absolutely. I think competitor burnout is a, a big thing in this. And there are very short lifespans in the sport because it's hard. Mm -hmm. I'll give you one example to wrap up this episode. And it's a client of mine who just started competing this year. And this was a bucket list thing for him. It's like, I'm just going to compete once, want to go through the discipline, see what it's like, check it off my list and move on. Seems, seems kind of cool. Well, then he wins a show. Then he wins a pro card. Then he wins a pro title. And all of a sudden he's like, holy shit, I love this. This is amazing. And, and he's going and going and going. And the year just gets longer and longer. He finally pulled the plug on a final couple of shows. And he said, you know what I didn't expect? My girlfriend threw her arms around me the week after I stopped dieting and said, oh my gosh, you haven't smiled in three or four months. Like, I feel like I've got my guy back. Um, you know, my, my 11 year old son 
for the first, I realized for the first time, you know, I'm sitting on the floor playing with him and we're going out for pizza rolls and having fun. And I just like, it just, I just lost that. I didn't even know it was happening. And, and I think, again, that's, that's where we're not viewing this as a long part of our career. And that's what I want to talk about guys in episode three is how to even take that to another level with, with discipline and stay centered and making room for all the other important things. So uh, stay with us through the rest of the series. We got five planned for you. We'll see you next time in Contest Prep University.